when you become successful. They didn't want to know you in the past, and all of a sudden they want to know you. I'd be, I was like the ugly duckling, but I turned into the swan. You know? It's, it's like anything else. You see, my, my work is, is, is a motivation. It's, it's a motivation for everybody in this room. You know, whatever they think they can't do. You see, it, everything can be possible within reason. And my work is now creating a, 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 an impact on everybody, on everybody that sees it because they only believe sometimes that, that things are important unless they reach a certain level, you know? But sometimes they don't have to do that. You know, it's, it, the person behind the work can make it happen. And I knew that I had to dig deep within myself to not only become the greatest micro-artist that ever lived, I had to sort of let the world know that, you know, everything was once small, because everything that we do, everything that we think of, before we do it, it's just a thought, and then, then we turn it into whatever we're doing. If it's a if it's a novel, we write in a novel. It starts off with one word, and it becomes a whole book, and it it may end up being a bestseller. You know, everything we say, we start off with a few little words, and then it ends up, you know, being being whatever we want it to be. Because everything was once small, trees are small. Everything was once small, but I put a different perspective on the way. You know, we see things, and I think my work is, is like a little message. It's like the punch you don't see is the one that knocks you out, and that's what my work does. This one here is um, Henry VIII and his six wives. As you can see, they all have their heads, because <laughs> cause Henry decided to behead all, the, all his wives, and um, because he was part of history, I wanted to sort of, part of British history, I just decided to, to, to carve him and his wives in the eye of a needle. He hasn't done anything wrong because I brought him down to size. <laughs> um, this one here is um, actually sold. That one sold for um, 175,000. Um, the gentleman bought that in England, so, but I have that on exhibition here because he said I could exhibit it. Um, that was probably one of my proudest pieces because of all the colours and, and trying to get Henry to his right stance and you know all his wives and getting all the colours without getting the paint to run and one mistake and it's all over you see when you're painting on this molecular level if your pulse moves and the colours mix there's nothing you can do because it only, it only gives you one chance to actually paint them and if you add too much paint on it that they, they change, the images change, that they, you can put too much paint on and they turn into a little blob. So, it, uh, you know, it, it's just, uh, it drives me insane, but I still do it. <laughs> yeah, they have little faces there as well. Henry's got his little beard there and his little hat, you know, and he's got his little stance there. So, yeah. That's um, <laughs> that's a longhorn bull, Texas longhorn. Somebody told me to do it, so I did it. <laughs> um, there's a diamond on top, which is a one-pointed diamond. He was carved from, um, I found a grain of sand, and I chiseled away the grain of sand to get the body, and made little holes in the grain of sand and shoved his legs in there. And the head was carved from, from sand. The, the, the horns are made from a fiber out of my shirt, the tail, I drilled a little hole in the back and shoved the tail in um, because it was, I knew I had to do that because it was very difficult to actually get the, the, the shape. Uh, the painting was very difficult because all the colors and, and, and getting the, 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 the cow, the bull to look ahead, you know, and, it, and get the, the bend in the neck. Um, it's just just so hard to, to explain the diamond itself as you can see what I did I used another little diamond and made little grooves in the top because only a diamond can cut another diamond and shoved the feet in and broke the eye of the needle off and shoved the diamond into the, where the needle should be um, that one's now in, in, in um, Texas so there's a 
few people looking at that one right now. Um, that one took me about six, six and a half weeks to do. It's a little bit too big though. <laughs> but the detail is, I'm happy with the detail. I've managed to um, capture the ball exactly how it looks, the proportions right. So I'm happy with that one. <laughs> that's everybody knows what that one is. That's the Mad Atta's Tea Party. As you can see, Alice is sitting around the table. There's a rabbit, and there's an actual um, teapot on the table. The lid of the teapot can actually come off. And there's cups and saucers. The Mad Atta has a hat. I've since made a, t uh, a ten and six ticket on his hat. And I had to put that on because I noticed it was missing. <laughs> but that's just been redone. The mouse is there. I'll show you the mouse. And the mouse is, is smaller than, than a blood cell. Smaller than a blood cell, without no doubt. Now, the first Alice I made, I inhaled the first Alice. So the second one happened to be better than the first one. So I'm quite glad I inhaled the first one. Um, to, to get her to sit behind the table and make the table um, and the chair and get everything to be proportioned, the actual table itself was made from one of my sister's old toys. I pulled out the fur out one of the toys and then I put it underneath the microscope and cut out a little table. The tablecloth, I had to make sure that it had ripples in it so I, I was pulling out fibers and experimenting and I made a little tablecloth and drooped it over the table, drilled little holes in the base of the needle and pushed it in very gently. I, I used friction with my um, eyelashes to sort of press things down because the tools I, I use are like little hooks and they have little like claws on which I, I, I was inspired by ants because ants have got little claws so I looked at their feet and made these little tools and I had to adapt things. The cups and, and saucers and, and the actual teapot was the hardest thing to do because they had to have the right proportion. Uh, the lid of the teapot can come off. The mouse could actually fit inside the teapot. But I decided I wanted to take the mouse out because he couldn't take it in there anymore. <laughs> um, as you can see, the Mad Atta's there. He's got eyelashes. He has a little bow tie. And to give you an idea of how small the whole thing is, if you see a period stop in a newspaper, smaller than the period in a newspaper, that's how small the whole thing is. Smaller than that. That's probably one of my favourite pieces because I was quite happy with the proportion. And um, that one is... Um, someone's looking at that one. But I'm, I'm hanging on to a lot of them so people can actually see them. Um, because I want, to, I want the world to see what I've done and I, I, it isn't all about the money, I just I do it because I want people to see the work. Is that it? Hmm? Want to come up? Okay. Okay. Um, I'd just like to say, you know, I think that uh, that's a lot now. But thank you very much.